Hi Bobcats! In this video we're going to define what the mole is. We'll talk about Avogadro's number and we'll also see how to calculate the mass of one mole of a substance that's also known simply as the molar mass. So the mole is what, the, what chemists use as a counting unit. You're used to counting units for eggs, right? Eggs are normally sold as dozens, donuts are sold as dozens, and we understand that a dozen means 12. So if you have one dozen eggs, you're going to have uh, 12 eggs. So a dozen um, is equivalent to the number 12. You could have a dozen donuts, and that would mean you have 12 uh, donuts. So the chemist's counting unit is called a mole. And a mole means that you have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd representative particles of whatever chemical substance you have. So the number that goes with mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And then we also have to specify, is it atoms, molecules, formula units, ions, of whatever chemical it is. Okay, so Avogadro's number, um, just, just for a little historic background on this, Avogadro was an Italian physicist who lived roughly around 1800, and he got this number named for him because uh, one of the things that he proposed in his scientific work was that if you have different samples of gas, that are at the same temperature and the same pressure, if they also have the same volume, then they will have the same number of molecules of gas. And so he was interested way back when in trying to, to count particles. And so Avogadro's number was named for him. Just a quick review, when you type Avogadro's number into your calculator, you wanna hit 6.02 EE, right, just that one key on your calculator, which is circled over here on the picture of the calculator, 6.02 EE23. And also just a quick reminder, when you look at your display, the display only shows one E, even though the button has two E's on it. Again, if I ran the world, those two things would be the same, the button and the calculator display, but I don't run the world. So, why do we have such a strange number for Avogadro's number? You know, if we were talking metrics, in the metric system, all of those prefixes and things go by powers of three, like kilo is a thousand and mega is um, a million and, or 10 to the sixth, and um, uh, giga is a billion or 10 to the ninth. So if Avogadro's number followed that pattern, um, instead of being 10 to the 24th, it would be something like 10 to the, I'm sorry, instead of 10 to the 23rd, it would be 10 to the 24th, or it would be 10 to the 21st, but not 10 to the 23rd. That's just off. And 6.02 is weird. Why not just plain old 6? So here's kind of an explanation of where this is coming from. If you look at a single molecule of water, which is pictured here in the lower left corner, we've got one oxygen atom, we've got two hydrogen atoms. On the periodic table, there's a number in the square for oxygen that's about 16. That tells you that a single atom of oxygen weighs 16 atomic mass units. And then there, if you look in the square for hydrogen, you'll see that it weighs 1.01 .01 atomic mass units. And that's true for either one of those hydrogens. Well, that's about one. If you add all of that up, 16 plus one plus one, since there are two hydrogens, you get 18. So a single molecule of water has a mass of 18 atomic mass units. If you can imagine an experiment, because we can't really do this because we can't manipulate individual molecules, but if you would imagine an experiment in which we take individual molecules of water and put them into a beaker of water, 
and you keep putting these individual molecules into this beaker until the, the, the scale that this beaker is sitting on tells you that you've got 18 grams of water in that beaker. Well, if you were counting, as you put those molecules in, you would discover that you were at 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water. It takes that many to make the weight in grams equivalent or have the same number as the weight for a single molecule in atomic mass units. So that's why we have such an unusual number for Avogadro's number. Great, so for the molar mass, what we want to find is um, the, the mass of a single mole, and we're going to be using the mass that's listed on the periodic table. It's going to be the number that has decimal points following it, not the whole number. And it takes a lot more effort to say in words what we're doing than to show you. So I'm going to move on to the next slide and show you on the next slide um, how we're going to do this calculation. Let's calculate the molar mass of sulfur hexafluoride. Well, first of all, we're going to need the subscripts from the formula, so that means we're going to have to use the nomenclature rules to write the formula. This particular uh, compound is a covalent or molecular compound because we have this numerical prefix hexa, which tells us what the subscripts are. There's no prefix on sulfur, so we're going to assume that there's just one. So the formula for this compound is SF6. If I go to, well, okay, the, the pattern that I'm going to follow for doing this calculation is I'm going to take the subscript and I'm going to multiply it times the mass on the periodic table. Since sulfur doesn't have a subscript written, we understand that's a 1. So for sulfur, I'm going to take 1, then go to the periodic table. And in the periodic table for sulfur, I've got 32.07. That's the number that has decimal places following it in the square for sulfur. It's just a, a convention for engineering chem and general chemistry that we're going to round the molar masses from the periodic table to two decimal places. So you'll see me doing that here. For fluorine, I'm going to take that subscript of 6, and I'm going to multiply it by the number from the periodic table. If I'm going to round that for fluorine to two decimal places, I'm going to get 19.00. Okay, so. Oh, how funny. I mixed math notation, right? I'm multiplying these two numbers. In one case, I use the time sign. The other case, I use parentheses. Sorry about that. It means to do the same math either way. This first number, or this first calculation is representing sulfur. The second representation is representing the uh, F6. So we'll do the multiplication, then we'll add it up for both of these. This is one of the nice calculations in chemistry in terms of order of operations in your calculator. We can just type this in left to right, and the calculator understands the order of operations correctly. With the 1 times 32, I don't need to hit the 1 times. I can just hit the 32.07. And then I'm going to add to that 6 times 19. And again, I don't need to type in the zeros after the decimal point in the 19. So I just want to use fewer keystrokes. It's faster. I have less opportunities to make a mistake. Then I'm going to hit Enter. And I get as an answer for this. Let's see what happened to my mouse. There we go. Um, I get as an answer for this 146.07. For the units, I can write either grams or I can write grams per mole. The words molar mass imply the per mole, but um, and so it's often written just grams, but you'll also see it written as grams per mole. Either one of those is an acceptable unit. Oh yeah, and just one more thing to, to show real quickly here. That six goes here in the calculation, that understood one ends up here in the calculation, and these other two numbers came from the periodic table. So I'm just going to abbreviate that with a PT. Let's try some practice problems here. 
since we need the subscripts from the chemical formulas for our calculation, let's first write the chemical formulas for these compounds. So pause the video, figure those out, and then come back and see if we got the same formulas. All right, for calcium chloride, for doing its formula, since calcium is a metal, chloride's a nonmetal, this is an ionic compound, we have to consider charges. Calcium's in the second column of the periodic table, so it's fixed charge with a two plus. All nonmetals are fixed charge. Chloride has a one minus. We'll have to crisscross the charges as subscripts. That gives us CaCl2. Butane, that A-N-E ending is an alkane. Bute means four carbons. So this one's gonna be C4. And then to get the number of hydrogens, we double the four and add two more, so that's a 10. Calcium phosphate is ionic. We have a metal plus a polyatomic ion. Calcium has a two plus charge. And then phosphate is that polyatomic ion, PO4, three minus. So we're gonna have to crisscross, and when we write the formula for calcium phosphate, we're gonna have Ca3PO4, Two. Remember to put parentheses because we want two phosphates, not 42 oxygens. All right, take a moment and calculate the molar masses. Pause the video. Let's see if you get the same thing that I do. For calcium chloride, there's one calcium, and the periodic table says 40.08 for calcium. There are two chlorines, so we're going to do plus two times 35.45, which is what the periodic table says for chlorine. And if I run all of that through my calculator, I get a grand total of 110.98. And the units can be either grams or grams per mole. Both are good. For butane, we have four carbons and each carbon in the periodic table has a mass of 12.01. And then there are 10 hydrogens, and in the periodic table, hydrogens have a mass of 1.01. If I run that through my calculator, I end up with 58.14, and we can use either grams or grams per mole, so I'll put the other one on since I used grams on the first one. Um, also, a quick reminder, we want to make sure that as you're typing this into your calculator, you're using the times key to mean multiplication. We do not want to use parentheses. Parentheses should only be used for order of operations. We don't want to use parentheses to mean multiply. So type it in just like I wrote these problems out. Then last but not least, we've got calcium phosphate. We've got a subscript of three on calcium, so I'm going to take three times the molar mass for calcium, which the periodic table says is 40.08. Then we need to figure out the subscripts on phosphorus and oxygen. The two outside of the parentheses tells us that we have two phosphates, or two of these clusters of a phosphorus and four oxygens. So if we have two of these clusters, and each cluster has one phosphorus, we have a total of two phosphorus atoms. So we'll have two times what the periodic table says for phosphorus, which is 30.97. I think I used 30.97. Let me double check that here real quickly. Because I already ran this in my calculator. No, I rounded that to 30.98. Oh, whoops, and I'm starting to write parentheses since I just talked about them. No, we're going to use the times key. 30.98. And then we're going to have, um, for oxygens, there's a subscript of four inside times two outside, which means we have a total of eight for our subscript. And then the periodic table rounds to 16.00. When we run that through my calculator, I end up with a grand total on this one of 310.20. And that will be in grams.